Hey guys, Sorker, welcome back to The Great Ace Attorney 2. Let's carry on where we left off. It's the final chapter. The Resolve of Ryanosuke Narahodo. Time to wrap things up. At long last, it's been a journey. And uh, quite a journey it's been. We even uncovered a twist at the end of the previous chapter that Herlock Sholmes' partner isn't, in fact, Dr. John H. Wilson, but Yujin Mikitoba of Japan. This entire time, he's been separated from his budding detective partner, because he was on the other side of the world, basically. And yet, now they've been reunited. They even had a nice snuggle on the couch, thanks to the contraption in the chest in the middle of Sholmes' suite. Uh, it was quite the revelation. We also have the fact that he may be Iris' father, and Iris may be Susato's half-sister. Um, I'm not sure if I'm buying into that. In fact, I've got a different theory surrounding that. I don't think... Dr. Wilson is in fact Iris's father, and I don't think Mikitoba is her father either. Um, if we go by the clues, uh, the fact that one, she's ten years old, right? And two, Sholmes has said that uh, she won't be meeting her father, like, ever, basically. Which makes me think that he's dead. Which makes me think, actually, what if Clint Van Zeeks is her father? right and she ain't gonna meet him because he's gone right and they're all like uh pretty hush about it because they don't want to reveal what actually happened to him i don't know that's just my theory as opposed to the case itself the professor case 10 years ago and gregson's demise a couple of days ago apparently we have all the clues to solve that but i haven't made any headway on that so i guess we're just gonna have to find out today in court it's the 3rd november 9 14 a.m the old bailey defendant's any chamber so, the time's finally come. Today, we unravel everything. Susato, I'll be counting on your support more than ever today, Miss Susato. You look like you haven't slept a wink. I mean, I don't blame you, but still. Uh, uh Miss Susato? Ah! Whoa, 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 ah! <laughs> what was that for? Oh no, what's the matter, Miss Naruto? You Susato took me down instead of your dad! Uh, uh, nothing. I was just saying, I'll be relying on your support today, but I, I don't know if I can do that anymore. I'm lying in the middle of the defendant's antechamber. I'm surprised the bailiff didn't bailiff take you down. I'm so sorry. Of course, I, I know I can be rather incompetent at times, but incompetent's not the right word. Uh, impulsive, maybe. I shan't let you down. Okay, well, can you help me up then? <laughs> Would you mind helping me to my feet then? Oh dear, I'm really very sorry. Ugh, oh, my assistant's first job this morning. Help me to my feet. Susato-san isn't her usual self at all. That's hardly surprising, I suppose. She's just found out that her father is the partner of a world-famous detective. Not to mention. Ah, oh, good morning, sir. Huh? Oh, Van Zeeks. God, I almost forgot about you, after the whole kerfuffle that happened yesterday. Lord Van Zeeks! Thank you for all your efforts yesterday. What? Did I hear that correctly? <laughs> he showed gratitude? What? Oh, uh, nothing. Just, I, I hope we can clear things up today. I really can't make this man out. His face says I hate you, but his words are... Almost jovial today. In fact, he hasn't been very Reaper-like at all since this all began yesterday. Maybe he's found his resolve. Well, Van Zeeks isn't the Reaper, Mr. Nahode. Thank you, Sasato, for reading my mind once again and divulging it out. Into the open. Good point. The Reaper. I suppose in hindsight, I shouldn't have allowed that misconception to go unchallenged. Huh? It was my tacit acceptance of that pseudonym. My failure to stop the Reaper becoming something more than a mere legend that led to all this. But you're not to blame for that, Lord Van Zeeks. It's only because serious crime in the capital dropped off so sharply when the public started calling you that. That's why you didn't say anything, isn't it? To be frank, I'm not sure that was the sole reason. It did sound very cool. What do you mean? Wouldn't you want to be known as the Reaper? There was a rumor at the time that the Reaper was really the ghost of my late brother. Oh. 
that having been slain by that evil killer, Clint's restless spirit returned as some sort of demigod to wield a deadly blade of justice where I, by dint of the law, could not. Yes, we've heard that story too. When I lost him, I felt as though I'd lost my guiding light. I didn't know where to go or what to do. And so, in some small way, I wonder if perhaps those rumors made me feel his absence a little less keenly. Could be. I mean, I wouldn't blame you. Knowing that he's by your side, killing those that you failed to prosecute. I mean, shit. Quite the fantasy. Even if I knew it was just an illusion. Just some nonsense conjured up by an over-imaginative public. He was obviously extremely important to you. Lord Clint Van Zeeks. Well, what's important now is uncovering the truth. That's all that matters. I know that you didn't take anyone's life. And I intend to prove that beyond a shadow of a doubt in court today. I never thought I'd say this, but I can see it in your eyes. That burning desire to cut through all the lies and deception. I can't deny it any longer. You are a lawyer of absolute integrity. Thank you. Does bluffing count as lying? Because that would reduce my integrity. But uh, I'm going to go with no. Now tell me. Why do I detect the scent of expensive tea leaves in the air? Iris. Oh, Iris. When did you get here? Oh. Ah, um. I brought you one of my special blends. Haley loves it. He says it helps him to clear his head. I thank you, my niece. Imagine, though. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's surely the first and last time I'll ever see a sight like this. <laughs> it's like the spectrum of moods. There's dark and brooding on the right, and jovial and happy on the left. You seem different today, Iris. Eh? Sort of subdued, I suppose. I am not. What happened yesterday is obviously still playing on her mind a lot. She's clearly very troubled about having stolen that autopsy report from Dr. Sight's laboratory. Alright then. Good luck to you both. I have to make a move now. Okay, don't rob the place. Oh, you're not staying? I thought you'd want to watch today's proceedings. I could use an audience. Well, I'd like to cheer you on, obviously. But I've got lots to get ready. Get ready? For what? You moving back to Japan with your half-sister, Susato? Oh, yes. Would you take this? Isn't that one of the little felt dolls that's usually dangling from your knapsack? Yes, it's a lucky charm. A little Hurley that I made once. Uh, Hurley? It looks more like a Hurley to me. <laughs> oh, man. If for some reason you completely run out of options in the trial today, then just pull this little Hurley's ears as hard as you possibly can. What? Pull, pull his ears. You want to pull each other's ears. <laughs> like Vulcan Raven and Metal Gear Solid. That's right. It's a way to bring good luck. I think you might need it. Iris's lucky charm has been entered into the court record. A little doll of Mr. Shum's in hair form. I've been told to tug its ears if I run out of options in the trial today. Alright, well, why not? Why not just now? You think what we'll need is luck? We always need luck, Susato. We always need luck. What a charming little rabbity version of Mr. Shames. Do you suppose this is how Iris sees him? If she sees all of us as animals, then God, I wonder what my first owner is going to be. Are you alright, Mr. Nahede? Your eyes are veritably boring into the poor doll's ears. Oh, sorry. I was just wondering, what do you suppose would happen if I were to tug its ears with all my might right now? I'm sure that we'll find out when the time is right. You know, this is a pretty clutch piece of evidence. To become a proper gentleman, you really must learn stoic patience. But I want to know! Me too! God, I can't believe I can't pull it now. At least I could be prepared. I just sneaked a peek inside the courtroom. And it seemed very different to normal. Yes, it would seem... that a certain someone has decided to pull out all the stops. What does that mean? 
don't tell me that uh, Kazuma's broad as katana is going to slice me down literally. What about Mr. Shame's Iris? I don't know. He was out all night and he hadn't come back home by the time I left this morning. He's not dead, is he? I swear to God. Oh, I see. Was Professor Mikotoba out all night too, do you think, Mr. Sato? Yes, it would seem so. I telegrammed the hotel this morning. And apparently they didn't come back to, the, to their rooms last night at all. Oh god, we're also missing uh, Jigoku as well. No one's seen him. They? Father and Judge Jigoku, I mean. Judge Jigoku too? He's been missing since uh, the morning yesterday. That's right. Nobody appears to have seen either of them since yesterday. Counsel for the defense and the defendant! Court is about to be in session. Please make your way inside the courtroom at once. Good luck, Ben Reno. Good luck, Susie. Yes, thanks, Iris. And you, Mr. Reaper. Hope it all goes well. Once again, I thank you for the delicious tea. It was very soothing. Oh, I'm so glad. All right, let's pull all the stops out, me. We got a jury of like ten people, or maybe even just one. We must go inside now, Mr. Lord, Va oh, Lord Van Zeeks. <laughs> Not Mr. Lord. Hmm. Mm, indeed. Lord Van Zeeks has always been the formidable prosecutor I've had the Loghorns with in court. But not today. Today I battle with another in pursuit of the truth. My best friend, Kazuma Asogi, who I trust more than anyone else in the world. Especially now that Susato took me down this morning, she kind of fell in the rankings. Now I understand what it was that drew me here to Britain all those months ago. Now I know exactly what destiny had in store for me. It's all been leading up to this one day. To this one trial. To this one final reckoning. Alright. Day two of our fourth trial of the game. Let's see what it has to offer. 3rd November, 9.30am, the Old Bailey courtroom. No investigative phase this time. Where's the judge? Is he dead too? Is Jigoku gonna take over? It feels even more oppressive here than it did yesterday. There are cold stares piercing me like knives from all sides today. Huh? Mr. Naruto, look! Holy shit! Lord Strongheart! What the hell are you doing here? Was he hiding under the freaking lectern or something? Kazuma must have known beforehand. No one tells me anything. The ramifications of this trial now extend far beyond the murder of one Scotland Yard inspector. Interesting. Very interesting. What does this mean? I mean, I always thought he was guilty, but is that too predictable? Are we gonna, like, indict a sitting judge, literally? <laughs> I mean, that hasn't been done in Ace Attorney before, I don't think. In fact, events have come to light that threaten to rock the very foundations of our country's legal system. The escape of a condemned criminal on the night of his execution, the subsequent unlawful shooting of the man, and the revelation that prison staff must have been complicit in the jailbreak. Britain is currently hosting influential members of the judiciary from countries all around the world. It is imperative that we uncover the truth in these proceedings to avoid international embarrassment. By royal decree, this will continue to be a closed trial. Oh my. And one over which I, male Strongheart, exercise total and unequivocal authority. <laughs> Damn, okay. Here it goes. The, the six jurors flames. I mean, I guess I was right. There's only one juror now, and it's him. As was the case in yesterday's proceedings, those here present in the public gallery are distinguished members of our judiciary assembled to bear witness to a fair judicial process. In other words, a collection of your acolytes, Lord Strongheart. Ooh, okay, bit of sass there, the claws have come out. Fuck you, Lord. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. sighs> On a personal note, I find this most distressing, Lord Van Zeeks. You are a prosecutor of exceptional talent. Much like your brother Clint, in fact. Oh, how dare you bring up his name. Oh, 
Sick. That is sick. In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. For the trial of Barack Van Zeeks, who officially stands accused of murder. Surprised as doves didn't fly around in the background. I got you, bro. Don't you worry. You'll be walking free in no time. Councils for the prosecution and defense, are you in full readiness to proceed? The defense is ready, my lord. As is the prosecution. Yesterday's proceedings brought to light a shocking and disturbing fact. There was a side to the victim, Inspector Tobias Gregson, that was unknown to his superiors at Scotland Yard. Yes, he was carrying out operations in secret, which Scotland Yard knew nothing about. And in those clandestine operations, he had an accomplice. Mr. Daly Vigil, who would be given the inspector's identification and present himself around the capital in order to establish credible alibis for Gregson. In that way, Gregson appeared to be carrying out his regular Scotland Yard work when in fact he wasn't. At the end of yesterday's session, Mr. Vigil, who had been suffering from amnesia, regained his memory. It would appear he buried his memories of the time deep inside himself as a means of self-preservation. Because whilst he was engaged as chief warder at Barclay Prison, he abetted the convict's escape. Alright, you two, jeez. Back and forth. It's like a Danganronpa closing argument here. They've drawn a comic book and everything. Mr. Vigil is currently recuperating at St. Sinners. He's recovered enough to give a signed statement about his movements on the day prior to the incident. He's formally admitted to posing as Gregson whilst investigating the Red-Headed League. Which brings us to the crucial issue of the victim's time of death. The defence yesterday proposed a suggestion that the victim may have been killed one day earlier. This was based largely on the discovery that the victim's pocket watch had not been wound. Because the defence asserted it, I think it's a bunch of baloney. Imagine. He's probably going to say that. The prosecution has something to report on that subject, my lord. Really? Go ahead, Prosecutor Asogi. I met once again with the coroner yesterday to discuss the issue. She confirmed that the defense's suggestion could not be ruled out. <sighs> it's entirely possible that Inspector Gregson was killed on 31st October, the day before his body was discovered. I have here an up up updated autopsy report that includes the amended details. But the official opinion of the investigation team was made clear yesterday. That the time of death was 5pm on 1st November. There are indications of an attempt to disguise the real time of death, however. It seems that the natural decaying process of the victim's body may have been slowed by keeping it chilled. Alright, okay. Apparently we've got all the clues to this case, right? So, surely we've got something to indicate where he may have been chilled. In his trunk? I don't think, uh... This has got icebox or anything inside. We haven't actually fully inspected this, so we should probably do that now before we proceed further. Have you seen this huge gash across the side of this trunk here? It's gone right through the leather and into the metal behind. Gosh, for a metal chest like this to have been so badly damaged. Whatever made the gash must have struck the side of the trunk with considerable force. Yeah, I guess the chupacabra did it. I wonder how it happened. Interesting. Interesting gash. Let's have a look inside. What do we have in here? Looks like it's important we look. Goodness. What's this? Look. There's something inside. Ooh, let's see. It appears to be a passport. Authorizing him to travel overseas. Was Inspector Gregson about to go on a trip abroad then? Yeah, he was going to Paris, no? Perhaps the date of departure might tell us something. That was... Hey! What is it? It was for travel on 31st October. Just one day before the incident. What? Really? Passport has been entered into the court record. Okay, very important we put this in. Passport document that was in Inspector Gregson's possession. It was issued for travel to France the day before his body was discovered. Gregson went to France the day before his body was discovered. Okay, well, it was meant to. Is that a donut in there? Anything else? Doesn't look like it. That's the main thing. Here's the gash. Anything up here? No. Anything underneath? No, I think- oh, blood! There we go. Let's check this out. Look at this dark stain here. You think- Yes, I'm afraid so. I think it's blood. Ugh. And you are going to say that. 
So that presumably means that this was present at the scene when Inspector Gregson was killed. It's the most logical conclusion, yes. I think Gina's been carrying this around with her. Did she not notice? If you didn't know any better, I suppose it does look like a grease stain from all the fish and chips. Uh, <laughs> that's a lot of ketchup. I don't think I even see uh, seen him use ketchup, so there's that. Okay, I think we've exhausted everything with the trunk. Let's leave that alone. Anything else I'm missing? So many papers. What topsy report? Have I even got the updated one yet? I don't think so. Um, and the lucky charm. Okay, the passport itself. Name Tobias Gregson, passport number ACD0522. I should probably censor that in case you guys try to, like, you know, steal his identity or something. There's a departure within one week from 31st October. Oh, within one week from 31st of October. Okay. So, not exactly on the 31st. Destination Port of Dunkirk, France. Purpose of travel, police business. Notes permission for the applicant. And one additional person to travel. Okay, so he's going to bring someone else with him. That's out of the question. There are no refrigeration devices in that part of London large enough to accommodate a human corpse. That's right, that was brought up. My lord, this is more than just conjecture. There's evidence to support the idea. We must investigate it thoroughly. Very well. The court will accept the new report as evidence. However, if this updated report is deemed to be accurate, it would give renewed significance to the movements of the victim on the day before the Fresno Street incident. It would, yes. Especially since on that day, Inspector Gregson was using Mr. Vigil to cover up his real movements. It's conceivable that he was killed in the course of his secret activities. Do I sense that the prosecution has some information regarding those activities? Scotland Yard put an enormous amount of effort into investigating that precise matter yesterday. Huh? I guess I was busy dealing with Mikotoba. I think we should begin by presenting the results of that investigation work. So the prosecution calls its first witness now. Who's it gonna be? Gina Lestrade. State your name and occupation for the court. Inspector Gina Lestrade reporting. Representative? Oh, Scotland Yard. A self conferred rank, but never mind. <laughs> Jeez. Way to cut her at the knees. Gina, again? What's your problem, Ode? What's with that? Gina, again. Look, eh? Uh, God, alright. Jeez, I need a freaking tinfoil hat, it seems. The boss meant the world to me. He done more for me than anyone else ever did. Uh, okay. I mean, I did kind of get you off a murder charge. Oh, Inspector Gregson, you mean. He got me out the back slums of the East End and took me under his wing. I mean, I suppose... He did offer her a job and turned her life around. Okay, fine. But I'm sick and best. Told me that life can have a purpose. So that's why I'm the best person to be standing there, speaking for him. Oh, Gina. Right. All out of the goodness of Gregson's heart. Not at all that he had his arm twisted by Mr. Sholmes. No. <laughs> What's relevant to these proceedings is that the outcome of Scotland Yard's investigations yesterday has revealed that the victim was carrying out some assignment the police knew nothing about. Very troubling. That face. Lord Strongheart knew. Of course he did. So, Inspector Lestrade, let's hear exactly what it says in that report. Coming right up, sir. Okay, here goes our first cross-examination. Or, witness testimony first, I suppose. Let's not jump the gun. Victim's movements. All yard detectives are supposed to follow orders and investigate what they're told. But a little search of the boss's office turned up a notebook that had a load of secret meetings in it. According to that, the boss was looking into some smuggled goods dealings that day. Looks like it was a big job and all, but the coppers weren't onto it yet. What matters most is, there's witnesses who what saw the Reaper at the place too. Van Zeeks was there? S smuggled goods? I don't know, do I? I'm just telling you what was written in the book. Tobacco, tea, spices, medicines. Goods of all sorts flow into London by illegal channels from across the globe. Including you, Cosmo, I think. <laughs> it's well known that they're disposed of at regular black markets that take place in the capital. But the police are rarely able to locate them in time. So Inspector Gregson was investigating one of those black markets? 
It's been suggested that high-ranking government officials may be involved in black market activity. No doubt Gregson was trying to avoid details of his investigations being leaked to the involved parties. Really? I bet you're into the drugs in the black market, huh? Strong heart. You must have a strong heart to stomach all those uh, medicinal compounds, no? That would explain why he was operating on his own authority without the Liyard's knowledge. And do we know where the dealings were taking place this time? In a particular room of a certain exclusive London gentleman's club. And on the day in question. The accused is known to have been there. That's the conclusion of Scotland Yard's investigations into the matter. That can't be. We haven't heard of anything about any of this. Members of the club have testified to it. There's no question. The accused, Barack Van Zeeks, was present. That would be very significant testimony then. Oh my, but... but... Lord Van Zeeks has made, has made no mention of this at all. In short, Lord Van Zeeks had ample opportunity to murder the victim. <laughs> very well then, counsel for the defence, begin your cross-examination. Okay, I'll try my best. Here goes. All yard detectives are supposed to follow orders and investigate what they're told. Hold it! Let's press everything for now. I don't quite know what the uh, what the statement we're going to need to present evidence for is just yet. So you follow orders, do you, Gina? Nah, not me. Above all that, see. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> You're the exception. Must always add special orders for me. Grab us some fish and chips, or go and give Toby his grub. That kind of thing. So, errands more than orders, then. This detective is still an apprentice, after all. Right, yeah, you gotta work your way up there, Gina. Yeah, well, this apprentice ain't one to sit around and wait to be told what to do, even by the boss. That's why I've been doing my own investigations into what happened. I didn't find much at first. But then... But a little search of the boss's office turned up a notebook that had a load of secret meetings in it. Well, this is definitely one we need to present, that book is... Certainly something we want in our court record. So you went through Inspector Gregson's things? Yep. As part of the independent Lestrade investigation. I'm sure your superiors would be delighted that you're taking the initiative. So I snuck into his office when no one else was about. Because if anyone at the yard had seen me going in there, they'd have turfed me straight out on the street. This is sounding less and less like an investigation and more and more like something else. Well, at least she's confessed it here in court. The prosecution understands that it was this very detective who discovered the notebook. He got that right. Nothing gets past Le Inspector Lestrade and her trusty assistant, Chief Inspector Toby. We found it in in one of the desk drawers that had a false bottom. That... that's impressive. <laughs> so then I went to hide myself where no one could find me so I could have a butchers at what's, what was written in it. Because if anyone at the yard had bound me out, they'd have turfed me straight out on the street. <sighs> you said that. I'm going it now, though. Ain't I? And if it weren't for me, it wouldn't have ever been found. Okay, but give it to me in my hands right now. According to that, the boss was looking into some smuggled goods dealings that day. Hold it! Do you have any idea where those dealings were taking place? Yep. It was all there in the boss's notes. Let's see if I can remember. Um... As I already said, the illegal dealings were due to take place at a gentleman's club. Yes, I remember. But I was hoping to find out the name of the club. You know, for research purposes, of course. That wouldn't be necessary. What? It's conceivable that the club might be used again by the smugglers in the future. Therefore, the prosecution has been asked not to reveal the name in these proceedings. It's a closed trial, guys, come on! I don't know what the fuss is all about. It's right here. All I've got to do is read it out. And I could too. I've got this reading game button up now. Can't I show you what I can do? Go on, what's the arm? The judge hasn't signaled his objection yet. Well, I could try to find out. What should I do? Insist. This is a closed court. Exactly. Thank you, Ravensky. The proceedings are confidential. There shouldn't be any possibility of the information being leaked. As I explained, there is some possibility of politicians being involved in this affair. 
The prosecution is rightfully exercising caution, I imagine. Yeah, well, you didn't overrule it, so... No, my lord. The prosecution has no objection. Hmm. Oh. Kazuma? There's no question that Inspector Gregson was looking into these black market dealings. However, it's not yet been established that he was on that particular trail on the day in question. If the defence requires to know the club's name, the prosecution has no intention of being obstructive. Well, well. Cooperation from the other side. I like it. Right then. I get to show off me reading skills. Oh god, she's gonna butcher the name anyway. What is the name of this gentleman's club? Apparently the smuggled goods deal was gonna happen in a gentleman's club called The Grouse. The Grouse? Okay, that doesn't sound familiar, I don't think, but I could be wrong. Hold it! Sounds Australian. The Grouse? What sort of a club is that? I ain't got the foggiest. Clubs ain't exactly my thing, but I am kind of curious. They're not places where a foreign student like you would be readily admitted. Foreign stu- oh, me. Are you talking to me? Have you looked in the mirror recently? <laughs> well, he's gonna go in with a mask on, obviously. I'll tell you what. Me and Chief Inspector Toby could go in undercover. Could you, though? Could you really? I could pick out a few good marks and see what else I could do. I could, I could find out while I was in there. I really don't think you should go picking out anything. Anyway. That's where these black market dealings were going to take place, is it? Yeah, it's gotta be. That's what the lower ranking detectives at the yard reckon. Says the even lower ranking detective. Okay, well, it's gotta be significant somehow. Looks like it was a big job and all, but the coppers weren't onto it yet. Have I got anything on the court record with reference to Grouse? Wait a second, I'm just looking at this photograph. Is that Gregson's trunk there? It's not, is it? Surely. Right there, is it? I mean, I can't really tell, it's in black and white. But I've been wondering why this photograph is even here. Hmm. Oh, magnifying glass made everything worse. God. <laughs> uh, okay. What else have we got? It turns out I haven't actually looked inside the wig either. Should probably do that. I've always wondered what the underside of a hairpiece looks like. That doesn't surprise me at all, Mr. Narahide. You always want to see what lies beneath, don't you? I'm not sure that's quite how I'd put it. You must have to use lots of bird lime to keep it in place on your head. So it doesn't get blown off in a gust of wind, I mean. That might be a little inconvenient when you wanted to take it off again, don't you think? I suppose. Okay, no tag or anything in here. God, I haven't examined this ticket either. Hey, it looks like this is some sort of steamship ticket. The SS Grouse, first class cabin 001. There you go, all right, shit. I just had to go through everything. Yokohama departure 11th September, London arrival 1st November. I swear I've examined this before. I must have uh, not saved properly. Oh, that's the boat that Professor Mikotoba and Judge Jigoku came on from Japan, isn't it? Yes, I think it called at Dunkirk on the north coast of France for a night before finally arriving in Dover. Okay, well this is all lining up, isn't it? That's what his passport's for. To think it's been almost a year since we arrived in Dover on the SS Buria. It seems a shame not to keep your ticket as a memento of your trip, don't you think? Yes, I agree. I have mine safely in my diary. Well, this happens to be evidence, so I'm glad it's in the court record. But I keep mine in my wallet, so I have it with me at all times. Oh, well how strange. Where could it have gone? Are you like this on purpose, Mr. Nahode? Did I imagine it? Or was that comment accompanied by a little sigh? Maybe I lost my wallet when you keep flipping me over, huh? How about that? Okay, anyway. Uh, just quickly examine this side before moving on. Professor Mikotoba has wonderful handwriting, doesn't he? This dark-suited young man is not in the least bit untrustworthy. Is it just me, or does that make me sound extremely untrustworthy? I do wish he'd at least call you a nice young man. I'm really not sure that would help. Okay. I think, well, our objection is that it's not a gentleman's club at all, it's the ship, right? So let's present. Objection! I've read about these clubs that exist here in Britain. As I understand it, they're places where well-to-do gentlemen socialize with friends and colleagues. Don't imagine for a second that a foreign student like you would be admitted. Okay, yeah, you'd say that already, Kazuma. Seriously, is your mirror cracked or something? Uh, 
Do we know for sure that the contraband dealings were definitely happening at a club called The Grouse? The police are currently looking for evidence, but haven't found anything defin definitive yet. And I'm sorry to say that they probably won't. What do you mean by that? I mean that the place Inspector Gregson was secretly going to visit on 31st October may not have been a gentleman's club at all. You're showing a very irreverent attitude towards our country's police force there, Council. If it wasn't a gentleman's club, then what was it? A steamship. You think it's a ship? What, like Steamboat Willie, who just went into the public domain? I have the evidence to prove it. Here! Let me see that. This dark-suited young man is not in the least bit untrustworthy. <laughs> uh, uh, the other side, my lord. But, it, but that's also relevant. Be more specific next time. Okay, you almost gave me a penalty for that. Ah, this would appear to be a ticket for passage upon a steamship, yes. The SS Grouse. Damn, he looks imposing there. So there's a steamship named the Grouse that happens to share a name with the club. But I'm afraid to say there's a flaw in your logic there. Really? Well, that's because uh, you haven't allowed me to present another piece of evidence. Dude. You're jumping the gun like I usually do. How? Look at the ticket. Notice the date of arrival in port. The ship arrived at the port of Dover on 1st November. Oh. The day on which the sound like a gunshot was heard on Fresno Street. In other words, on the day in question here, 31st October, when the victim was on his clandestine op or mission, operation, same difference, that ship hadn't yet docked on British shores. That would certainly make an undercover investigation somewhat challenging. Yeah, well, not impossible. Okay, let's, let's bear that in mind. The fact that the steamship hadn't yet reached Britain substantiates the defense's assertion that the victim was investigating the SS Grouse on the day in question. Then show your evidence for that assertion. Very well. Yeah, that's right. I do have evidence. In that case, counsel for the defense, present your evidence to the court now. Evidence that substantiates your claim that the victim was investigating the SS Grouse on 31st October. Take that! What's this? A passport for travel issued to the victim. Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's, yeah. Cat got your tongue there, Kazuma? Dated 31st October. What are you suggesting? I'm suggesting that just one day before the inspector's body was discovered, there's a distinct possibility he wasn't even in the country. <sighs> oh, yeah. Stand fast there, Kazuma. Order, order. This document is for passage to France. It does appear to have been officially authorized. The day before the SS Grouse arrived at Dover, it docked on the northern coast of France for a night. According to my father, who was on board, at the port of Dunkirk. Dunkirk, France. What could possibly have taken the victim there? Good question. <laughs> I'm impressed, Ryonosuke Narahoto. Okay, thank you for saying my full name. I certainly didn't expect you to get your hands on that passport. What? You, you knew about this? Of course I did. I need to save face right now. The prosecution strategy for this trial has been laid down by the Crown Prosecution Office. On the day before the incident, the victim was investigating contraband dealings at a London club. That's the outcome of Scotland Yard's investigations and the line the prosecution has been asked to follow. But personally, I don't agree. I think the prosecutor's office is trying to hide something. What? And now that you've expertly disproven their assertion, I intend to reveal what I believe that something to be. What are you playing at, Prosecutor Asogi? I will kick you out of this country so fucking fast. <laughs> A courtroom is a forum for the truth, my lord. Which is why it's my duty to present all the facts without exception. Let me guess. This was your intention from the outset, wasn't it? The reason Inspector Gregson secretly made his way to the steamship docked in France on the day in question. 
was to carry out a mission for the Reaper. Woohoo! Is that what we're going with? Okay. Uh, well. Wow. 